from the CETA clinic. My name is Dr. Mike Lloyd, I'm the director of the clinic and today I'm going to be talking about why it can be difficult working with internal experience or inner experience. This is especially relevant for people with other specified dissociative disorders but is also for dissociative identity disorder presentations as well. The term inner experience that I'm going to be speaking about today is largely taken from Suzette's book, Coping with Trauma-Related Dissociation. So this is the book, uh, highly recommend getting hold of this. So it's a skills training book containing many, many different aspects of self-help. Um, Suzette's an excellent writer. I think it would be definitely worth getting hold of this book if you think that you'd like to have a bit of a more greater understanding or to work with in therapy. It is a skills training manual containing handouts and ways of being able to work with trauma-related dissociation and it's recommended that this is done in conjunction with a therapist. Trying to understand what inner experience actually means, largely it's our internal perception, so it's our thinking, it's our feeling, it's how we see, how we understand, how we make sense of the world. But we can also think about this in terms of dissociation, so the inner experience can be the voices that are heard, the, the emotions that may suddenly turn up out of nowhere, which is very common with people with severe dissociation. So inner experience becomes all the sensations that we, we interpret and we understand as being part of our inner world. Largely inner experience is very natural. It's a very normal part of life. Everybody has an inner experience. Unfortunately, what can happen in people with trauma histories though, is that this inner experience brings about feelings of shame or sadness, guilt, rage sometimes. And this makes it extremely difficult and develops what the structural dissociation model calls the phobia of inner experience. This phobia is very powerful. Anybody that has a phobia, and I have had this in my life and I've done a video about how I overcame that phobia, but anyone that has had a phobia knows that this is an incredibly intense and powerful experience that is very, very difficult to hold on to. And therefore it tends to be avoided wherever possible. Certainly in people with dissociation, if there are internal voices, then it might not just be the inexperience of the self that is difficult, and I'll come on to explain what I mean by that, but actually the inexperience can be brought in by other parts, so the alters, the others, the dissociated states from traumatic experience can bring their own level of sensations, all of which can become overwhelming. What I'd like to talk about then is four reasons why this internal, this inner experience can be so difficult trying to help people realize that not wanting to have it is actually a normal reaction when things are really, really difficult. The first is that inner experience is overwhelming for many, many people. There are intense emotions that can be experienced. As I've said before, rage, disgust, shame, guilt, fear. And while many people are able to manage such incredibly intense emotions, People that have got trauma histories, especially attachment-based trauma histories, often have a lack of regulation of this inner experience. That means that the caregivers early in life didn't really show the person how to manage intense emotions. Often the caregivers may have been the cause of those intense emotions, so certainly they're not going to be around to help a person manage and cope if they were the ones that were leading to those emotions in the first place. So we have a lack of regulation or containment about the individual so that they don't actually know how to manage those emotions. And that's fair enough. If no one's been shown how to do something, there is a lack of expectation or should be a lack of expectation that they can manage those things really, really well. So when we talk about unregulated emotions, which is something that's mentioned a lot in diagnoses of things like emotionally unstable or borderline personality disorders, that the person's never actually been shown how to do it. So having an experience, not knowing how to deal with it, leads to stress, leads to anxiety, leads to avoidance, leads to the phobic response. That's the first one. The second is that we often interpret our inner world as either being good or bad. We do this with lots of things, so our inner world doesn't make any, it, it's not surprising that we would do exactly the same. I'm going to quote from Suzette's book here to try and help understand how this good bad thing takes place. So Suzette writes, Anger is bad and dangerous, so if I feel anger, I must be bad and dangerous. And also, only people who are unlovable and worthless feel shame. 
So if I feel shame, it means I am a failure and unlovable. What Suzette is saying is that our internal experience leads us to interpret things about ourselves rather than being able to understand that the internal, the inner experience is both is very natural and is a consequence of our lived experience. If, if bad things have happened to us, we tend to have bad thoughts and bad feelings. That doesn't make us a bad person. This is a very common trap to, for people to fall in with trauma histories. Therefore, if we, tend, if we start interpreting ourselves as bad, we want to reject the, in, uh, the inner experience that leads us to that consequence. So not having an inner experience leads us to not feeling bad about ourselves. Therefore, avoidance becomes a factor. The third reason that we find it so difficult is that the inner experience can be a reminder of our trauma. The things that happen to us come back through our inner experience, one of which is memory. Therefore, the memories trigger trauma reactions. The trauma being an intense, very quick anxiety reaction brought on by something happening in the environment that can trigger a thought, can trigger a feeling, can trigger a memory. And that fear that leads to a dissociative reaction for many people. So whether it's zoning out or shutting down or having a shift in identity or relocating or losing time, these responses can take place as a result of inner experience. Again, another reason why people find inner experience an incredibly difficult thing to be able to, to focus on because it can generate such enormous reactions and lead to episodes of dissociation. So working through trauma memory that's been remembered, if not done in the correct way, can lead to more dissociative responses. This is why the phase treatment model again mentioned in another video, is so vital because it's about stabilising the ability for the individual to hold on to that trauma memory before a dissociation happens. And the last reason is that inner experience can lead to that anxiety which can be a predictor for people that something bad is going to happen. Many people describe this overwhelming sense that they know something awful is going to happen even though nothing is happening in their environment. It's a sense that it's happened before, it can happen again, and anything triggering memory, anything triggering that internal experience of smell or sight, or it could be anything, can lead to people having that dissociated response, which means that they feel that the trauma is going to be repeated and they lose track of the reality of the present. In summary, therefore, we see that inner experience is an incredibly powerful tool to help understand what has happened in a person's life and the consequences of that in their everyday world. But it can also be overwhelming and it can also lead to intense fear and pain or sadness, disgust, shame, guilt, all of these things can take place as a result of focusing in on that inner experience, which means that many people do what is incredibly natural and avoid it and they try and block it out, suppress it, do anything to not have that inner experience. And yet inner experience is the key tool to try and understand what has gone on for a person to help them heal. So to overcome the inner experience is then one of the key tasks of therapy. This is why it's so important and why it can be so problematic in short-term therapies because that inner experience needs time to solve, to be able to create a foundation, a structure by which the person can, main, can maintain and manage the emotions of that inner experience without dissociating. So I hope this video has been helpful. Um, please do check out some of the other ones because some of the other videos are linked to what we've spoken about today. If you'd like more content, please like and subscribe. And I will hopefully see you again in the next video. In the meantime, please do take great care.